What's up there guys, thanks for tuning in, this is Rick, you're watching Fanfare for the Conscious and in the video today I'm going to be talking about what I like to call left brain spirituality. Let's dive in. So left brain spirituality is a term that I've coined to kind of describe my quest as it has always been to uh, unite both science and spirituality. I was brought up in a very dualistic household where my dad was an atheist and my mum was um, a born again Christian. So I've always had mixed messages with regards to spirituality, um, whereas my dad considered um, religion and spirituality to just be complete bull, basically. Um, used to refer to my mum uh, going to church and stuff as uh, Bible bashing, whereas my mum has always sort of tried to encourage that sort of spiritual side to me. Um, initially it was by you know inviting me to church with her, I guess mostly because you know um, she had no, nothing else to do with us uh, while she was at church so she brought, um, brought us along with her um, but I took something from that. Um, it was you know quite an upbeat church um, you know with a band guitarist and a drummer and you know what I saw at church was you know a lot of people really enjoying themselves and finding a lot of solace and um, connection with something that I felt within me um, and I couldn't quite describe it in scientific terms but I reasoned that if God existed then he must have created science and therefore by looking through science we should be able to find the fingerprints of God and that's what I've always tried to do since being around 14 years old when I, I noticed some interesting similarities in the way you can interpret the Genesis description of um, the creation of the world and the universe, you know, starting from let there be light um, and putting that next to the Big Bang. Uh, if you look at the text in a certain way, it can actually be seen to be describing the same thing, but in slightly different terms. So I'm going to start today with part one, just talking about the difference between knowledge and gnosis. Um, and knowledge is the is based on physical evidence, logic and reasoning. It is the left brain way of understanding things, being able to provide evidence, being able to provide reasonable arguments to support your position, etc, etc. Um, the other one is gnosis and this is based on intuition, instinct and emotion. It's when you instinctively know something and you can't intellectually reason why you know it or what has brought you to that conclusion. There's just this intuitive knowing of the heart um, and that's what a lot of people would refer to as faith. And this is what a lot of um, mainstream Western and um, yeah, mainly Western religions, Abrahamic religions are based around that God cannot, doesn't prove his existence. You just have to take it on faith. Now, I believe a lot of the uh, Abrahamic and uh, mainstream religions have been manipulated to artificially separate us from God. See my um, God of nature, God of man um, and God of the universe video which I've linked above there for you. Um, and I also believe that science itself does describe um, what you could call an overarching intelligence, a God so to speak, something with um, conscious intelligence that has designed a system um, that allows itself to self-perpetuate and, and I think we can find this knowledge of God through studying science and we'll come on to that in later videos. However this search for a unity between science and spirituality brought me eventually through to something that I like to call uh, something that's called hermetic philosophy. Now hermetic philosophy is rumoured to have come out of ancient Egypt um, its primary prophet, so to speak, um, is known as Hermes Trismegistus or Her Hermes the Thrice Great, um, rumoured to be um, essentially the representative of source on earth with complete knowledge of how the universe is um, constructed. Um, and Hermetic philosophy is supposed to be the root of all religions. The basic knowledge is, uh, that is contained in Hermetic philosophy has um, 
percolated out through the world via the ancient mystery schools and has formed the very core truths that you find in all Abrahamic religions, in Judaism and um, in Islam and Christianity, all the Abrahamic religions and even Eastern religions as well. So Hermetic philosophy uses intellect, reason and logic to infer spiritual truth. And the thing which I particularly was drawn to about Hermetic philosophy is it does recognise the limitations of the being which we are now, the physically incarnated entity, humans, mankind, whatever you want to refer to us as. And it's built on a basic law of correspondence, which means as above, so below, and as within, so without. This is one of the most famous tenets of Hermetic philosophy. Um, you will have heard of it. It's been popularised an awful lot. And it, this basically comes to the idea of mind being above matter. The idea being that matter cannot be shown to create mind, but mind within the sphere of the mind can be um, shown to create matter. Examples when you dream. The dream reality to the dreaming person who is unaware that they are dreaming is just as real to them as reality itself. And with the tenant as above, so below, if we can create matter within our minds, then God mind can create matter within his mind. So if we come into the, the sort of basic tenets, and these are the bits which really drew me to hermetic philosophy because it's got um, a logic to it and a reason to it, um, which satisfies the left part of my brain, which was never happy with just relying on this internal gnosis, this faith, this instinctive understanding that there was something more to the world than the physical reality that we see. So the intellectual side of it here is we have to understand that the all, everything, all that is, must be by definition unknowable. Because if we were to know it, then we would be the mind of God ourselves. And it's the only way you could even begin to approach the knowledge of God. And the all, all that is, must be all that is. Because if it isn't all that is, then there's something outside it. And then you're not referring to the all once again. Language itself is inadequate. This is another tenet that it recognises, that language, human language, is necessarily completely incapable of actually describing what it is dealing with by virtue of it being unknowable. There are no human concepts that can accurately describe this and intellectual concepts invented by man are at the very best vague metaphors for exactly what is going on. So with all this sort of bared in mind, I want to give you a little meditation to take away today. Something to think about until we discuss this next. I want you to think about what you are. What are you? Are you this flesh? Are you this blood? Are you this material being? Or are you something more ethereal, operating through the flesh? Like putting your finger in a glass of water to see how warm it is. Where are you? Are you physically contained within this being? Is that the only possibility? Could you have come from somewhere else? Could you be transmitted from another place? Could this body merely be a receiver for the brain waves and the consciousness that is your mind? Head over to YouTube. I'm going to put a link at the end of the video here. And I want you to look for The Secret Beyond Matter. It's quite an old documentary, but it's very, very good at giving you an awful lot to think about with regards to the nature of consciousness and the nature of mind in itself and the nature of the world in which you believe you are living. 
Thanks very much for watching, guys. If you did like this content, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe, setting that bell notification to all, so you will always be kept up to date of every single one of my updates, which drops on a Monday, a Wednesday, and a Friday at 8 p.m. Don't forget to head over to lawfulbank.com, get yourself signed up. You can speak to me and other wonderful lawful living beings there, sharing information and organizing ourselves to overturn the system of hierarchy, tyranny, and oppression. Take care of yourselves, guys. Don't forget to stay free, think free, act free, and I will see you next time.